Open the door! Go away! Go away! What do I do? I didn't hear him. I didn't hear him. Either. Welcome to First Person Defender, where regular people come face to face with unknown attackers. And fight their way out. This is First Person Defender. As you get home, you get a call, there's a bad guy in the house. You're downstairs, but the bad guy is upstairs. What do you do and how do you deal with that? All that right now on First Person Defender. These force on force scenarios use training guns that fire non lethal projectiles. I've just tried to look at resources and do as much as I can on my own, but now it's like the practical application of taking things to like the next level that I'm really interested in looking at. Oh man, I don't think this is gonna go super good for him. You know, again, um, I say it all the time, watching videos, reading books, watching YouTube is not training. It might expose you to something, but you've gotta go out to a range with an instructor and get hands-on training. This is something that has accrued over years. It's been really cool to do this journey with my wife and I, and we're doing it together. We're here and I'm excited to go through a scenario, but also learn what I don't know and what I need to shore up on. This is exposes Steven to his kind of lack of capability, lack of knowledge, lack of experience, and then they go seek it out. There's no good or bad. You're not good at it or bad at it. You're either trained or untrained. I expect to make some mistakes, for sure because I am I'm at, I'm at the beginning. I'm just really you know, new to all of this. So in this scenario, we're obviously having his wife as the victim role player. He's not used to this sort of stress inoculation. It's not something that he's built up through training. So hopefully hearing her voice, hearing her panic, her emotion will drive some re realistic emotion into him. And that's natural, that's realistic stress. In this scenario, Stephen gets a frantic call from his wife. Here's the problem. She's in the other end of the house and upstairs. Will he storm the doors or does the scenario end peacefully? Hello? Stephen, someone's in the house. I think they're upstairs. Someone's in the house with you? Yeah, I'm off in the bedroom. I don't know what to do. I hear right. you. No, stay where you're at. Stay where I you're hear you. you. Open the door! I'm coming. I'm coming. Open the door! Go Open the door! Stay where you're at. Stay where you're at. Go away! What do I do? Index, index, index. Index. All right, tell me what happened. All right, so I was just getting home at the end of the day, and I got a call from my wife that somebody's in the house with her. So I told her to stay there, and so I decided to come in as fast as I could and try to be smart about it. I don't know how many people are in the house or what's going on. I've, I, I've run like to get to this point. I just jumped straight in there. And when I saw him, it was like he appeared there. Like I didn't like See magic one come just around. appeared. He was there and like it was like the sights didn't exist. Like I was just pulling the trigger. So. What are you feeling right now? I'm so jazzed up, it's insane. Like I'm just shaking like yeah. all over. Yeah. You think yeah. about it, some, just the idea of someone attacking your wife. Yeah. That already gets your blood pumping, just the idea of it. Right. And you're hearing her voice. How does that change things? I mean, like anything that I understood about like room clearing and like trying to pie around corners, like it almost goes right out the window and you just want to sprint there if you know where she's at as fast as you can. First off, that was awesome. Like I could see the adrenaline dump occurring in your brain. This is what happens under stress, yeah. right? And this is why we need to inoculate ourselves 
to these kind of stressors so mm -hmm. that we can think more clearly. You did a pretty good job of getting here quickly. I think there are some things that you could have done to get here quicker and then be safer on the stairs, yeah. right? Cause like you were a little bit safer downstairs and then when you got to the stairwell where you knew the bad guy to be, you kind of threw all caution away and were like, yeah, Leroy Jenkins, let's yeah, roll, you yeah, know? Like totally. you just ran up the stairwell. This is more like active shooter tactics, right? Mm -hmm. And you have a stimulus driving you to a certain area of the house. For me, I'm blowing by all that stuff downstairs. Now I may look and just glance with my eyes, but I'm getting upstairs to where I know for a fact there's a bad guy. Um, then once you got to the stairwell, now it's like, all right, it's go time. You had made a statement that it looked like he just appeared, right? You mm -hmm. didn't see, a, see him come around the corner. Right. And we see that happen a lot because you're focused on the hole, right? Mm -hmm. Albeit you probably have some tunnel vision, but you're focused on the hole, not necessarily where the next immediate threat area is. Where can the next threat appear? Right. And that's kind of when I'm going through a house, that's what I'm looking at. Where is the next threat area? Where's my next threat area? And that's, I'm going from those threat areas to threat areas. Ruger is one of the sponsors for FPD. And they actually make a ton of different revolvers. And a revolver can be a really good option for concealed carry, home defense, or even like hiking, bear protection kind of stuff. So if you're thinking about getting a revolver, take a look at Ruger. So let's talk about stairwells. Okay. This is really the focus of where you are going. Now you know, top of the stairwell, upstairs, outside your bedroom, imminent threat. When you approach, you, you really blasted through here, mm -hmm. but you were hugging the inside handrail. We want to do the opposite. Okay. We want to hug outside. This gives us a better angle. So we have two very different threat areas. Mm -hmm. Which one is our very first threat area? To this right here, the yeah, open railing. Really. Yeah. This is the first thing that we're kind of becoming exposed to. But now we can't negate what's around this landing as well. Obviously, if someone's hunkered down behind those cabinets, we can't see them. That's what's known as dead space. By following the outside handrail, as I'm training on my initial threat area, and when I first come up here, let me say, like, I'm typically taking a 50% bite because I haven't gotten close enough to this yet to really focus on this. Mm -hmm. And I don't want all my attention focused up here as I'm moving up to this kind of point of no return and then someone pop out there. So I'm taking a 50% bite. Gotcha. That way if someone does pop up here, I've got halfway to go. Yeah. If someone does pop out there, I've got halfway to go. I'm not swinging all the way from here to there or vice versa. But as I come up here and I'm training up here, as soon as, look at, if I can see his head right now. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. If I'm here, I cannot see his head right now. Literally that one step, head, now I see literally nothing. Mm -hmm. Now start slowly taking a step up. Tell me when you can see right, the head. Right here. Right there, yeah. boom. You can see the head, right? Yeah. Obviously, if it's not your wife's head, you're cleared hot. <laughs> right. Ch hopefully, you're seeing him before he even sees you. Now as you continue to move up the stairwell, now you're gonna transfer your attention to the, the landing. Mm -hmm. And same thing, I want you to transfer your attention to the edge of where they're gonna be able to leave cover. Yeah. Stay on the outside. Can you see the shoulder? Yeah, totally. I can right? see, I can see so, the whole torso. So now you see the whole torso. And again, mm -hmm. that's giving you the first physical cue that there is someone there. One step transition. As soon as you can see, engage. Next threat. Nice. Beautiful. One of the companies that makes this show possible is Kimber. Now they're known for their 1911s and they make really nice ones, but can you carry one? Well, they actually make some smaller versions of their 1911s, whether that's in 45 or nine, they have a few different options there. And if you like 1911s and you want one to carry, Kimber has you covered. We appreciate their support. First Person Defender brought to you by Springfield Armory, Gun Dealio Smartphone App, Kimber and Ruger. All right, so in Steven's scenario, we got that phone call, that panicked phone call from his wife, Candace. He ran up to the front door of his house. The first thing he did actually 
on the phone, he switched the phone over and pulled his flashlight out. Now, once he got in there, he didn't actually end up needing it, but he was in such like an autopilot mode. He was vapor locked. He kept the light in his hand. First things first, if we need a light, we take it out. If we don't need a light, we can put it back in our pocket, right? Let's keep two hands on the gun if we can, and an extra hand be able to do something, take it off the gun, open a door, etc. But if we need a light, we need to understand lighting techniques and how to use the light. I'm gonna cover three real basic lighting techniques. There are a lot more than these three. I recommend go to a low light training course, become familiar with all the different lighting techniques because they all have their own little application. So the first one that I'm gonna cover, it's going to be single hand on the gun and what's called the FBI technique. I'm taking the light and I'm moving the light away from my head and my body, offsetting it. This allows me to get the light away. It allows me to move it and stream it in a different manner, kind of turn it on, aim it around a little bit, light and move, light and move, or light and shoot, light and shoot. The next technique is the neck or jawline index, right? Um, I'm taking my knuckles and I'm anchoring it to my jawline. Basically what this does is it's aligning the light and the beam of light with my head and wherever I'm looking, right? It's a little bit more accurate to aim the light than the FBI technique, but now we're putting a homing beacon right next to our dome for the bad guy to aim at, right? So you can obviously see the downside to that. So the next one is the Harry's technique, all right? I'm bringing the light underneath the gun hand, not in front of it to where I'm muzzle sweeping myself, but I'm bringing it underneath and mating up the backs of my hands to get the light on the right side of the gun. Those are the three different techniques that I'm gonna cover. Like I said, there's a lot more. Go to a low light training course and get trained up on all of them so you're familiar how to use a defensive white light. Let's go and do it live. I'll show you what it looks like. Hey, even if the bad guy is attractive like James Dean, you still need good ammo. Streak Ammo sponsors this show, we really appreciate it. And it's pretty cool stuff. The bullet actually glows, the back of the bullet glows after you shoot it. So you can see where your bullets are going and make adjustments on the fly, which is really good if you need to hit bad guys. But he's so not a bad guy, look at him. Look how cool he is. Someone is in the home. Problem is that someone doesn't belong there. Is Steven able to maneuver through the house to end the home invasion? Hello? Steven. Hello? Hello? Steven, someone's in the house. I think they're upstairs. Someone's in the house? All right, call 911. Hang up and call 911. Call 911. Go. At one one two three five Boulevard. There's someone in my house. My husband's coming up the stairs to help me. Oh my gosh, I think he has a gun. I hear something. Please help. Oh no, I lost connection. Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Whoa, 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 Don't move! Don't move! I'm not, I, I just need some money, man. Call 911, don't move! Don't move! Candace! Candace! Are you safe? Is yes. there anyone in there? No! Are you safe? Yes, I'm safe! Come to me! Uh, index, index, index. Tell me how you're feeling. You're breathing heavy, man. Yeah, it's intense. <laughs> yeah. It's intense. I'm feeling, yeah, really pumped. But I also feel that the knowledge that I learned I was a lot more confident coming into the situation. So take me through this one. I got the call and 
she said somebody's in the house and she's being really quiet. So it kind of makes me think somebody doesn't know that she's in there trying to go, get at her. So I tried to I get in the house real fast and then decided, I was like, oh, I told her to call 911, go ahead and call 911. So then I try to get to her as fast, as fast as possible. So I come up, I blow through to the stairs about as fast as I can. And then there, kind of slow down, take a minute and try to navigate it. And I'm coming up the stairs looking for any threats. What were you seeing here as you're coming up the stairs working the stairwell? So I come up here and I look up and there's nobody here to engage. This is yeah. an empty space. So then I know to, to go to the next possible area, that there's gonna be a threat. Yep. Better or worse than the first time? It's kind of like a coin toss. I think the re end result is way better. 100%, look, yeah. you didn't get shot, yeah. you didn't have to shoot anybody. Right. If you do not have to shoot anybody, you do not want to shoot anybody. There's really, there's no good that comes out of shooting someone, right. plain and simple. Even if you're in the right. Mm -hmm. Now obviously, if it's, a, if it's a choice between you or them, or, or a loved one in them, you do what you have to do. You came up here, you utilized the techniques we trained, you stayed on the far outside banister. You cleared the initial threat, mm -hmm. right? What'd you see? There's empty space. You saw there. nothing, right? right? You saw an empty space. You transitioned to the next potential threat or dead space, which was behind this cabinet. As you came up, you encountered an unknown. Good job issuing commands, and you were serious, and you were loud. There was no mistaking what you wanted him to do. He complied with you, you didn't shoot him. I let it play out a little bit, because I kind of wanted you to see what you were gonna do. Right. You slid the gun away from him, you kept your gun trained on him, and you checked on your wife. What'd you do next? Well, I, I wanted to make sure that she was safe and that there wasn't another threat in there Absolutely. where she, where she was- Holding her hostage, whatever right, maybe. Right, and I, that yep. I wasn't aware, so I, want, I just wanted her next to me so I could make sure that she was safe and protected. I'm okay Until with you thinking. checking on her. Yeah. I'm okay with you getting that confirmation. Right. But I would not bring her into this room. Yeah. Right. Makes, yeah, it makes because sense. It makes sense. You have a gun. There's a gun on the floor. There's a bad guy. We don't know what he's on. Mm -hmm. We don't know what his capabilities are. One thing when you made entry downstairs in your house, what could you have done better? Yeah, I was not prepared. I just blew through the door and then I was like, I'm a sitting duck. You're like, wait, I don't have a gun in my hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's my phone going? Right, I, right? Went, I went from having a hundred things in my hands to having nothing in my hands. All in all, I think it was a good job. Cool. And I'm glad the stairwell training helped. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, nice work. One of our goals for this show is to help more people be more prepared. So if you like the show, share it around, and also on YouTube, ring the bell so you can get notified about new episodes. On Facebook, like us and follow the page and you'll see new first person offender episodes when they pop up.